Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And after learning about Apple's exciting announcement that they are moving away from Intel over to their own custom ARM-based processors at WWDC 2020, I have never been more excited about the future of Apple's laptops and desktop lineup. However, we are now in a weird limbo period. We know the transition is coming, but we don't know exactly which products will be transitioned over first to Apple Silicon, and we still have a bunch of recently refreshed Intel Macs on the market, some of which I actually really like. So for this video, I'm going to address a question a lot of you had in the comments section on my last video, and that is, should you buy an Intel-based Mac now, or should you try waiting for Apple to transition over to their own custom processors? And I think I can actually offer some more pros and cons than I could last week, considering that we actually have some leaked benchmarks of the developer kit that they sent out to developers, and we might actually know a little bit more on how these ARM-based Macs are going to run old software. Now, first of all, you have to consider the benefits of what might happen when Apple switches over to their own custom ARM-based processors. And I think a lot of the benefits will be seen particularly in their laptop lineup. Now, for the first time in a while, I actually like where Apple's laptop lineup is right now. You have the respectably priced MacBook Air starting at $999, and then other laptops as you go up the tier, like the entry-level MacBook Pro, the four-port model, and also my favorite laptop, the 16-inch MacBook Pro at the end of the lineup. Now for this video, I won't be doing a full rundown of these laptops. If you want a specific rundown on these laptops, I actually made a video on my channel, which I will leave here. But I bring these laptops up because I think most of them have two problems that I think Apple's ARM transition will probably make better. And that mainly has to do in the areas of battery life, and thermals. The first notable gain we should see from Apple moving away from Intel x86 chips over to their own custom ARM-based processors is in the area of battery life. Apple's chips usually require much lower power to run, and we can look at products like the iPhone and the iPads, and those products have much smaller batteries than their MacBook counterparts. So when you consider the performance per watt advantage of what Apple is doing with their own custom A-series chips, it's not hard to imagine that MacBooks stand to get much better battery life. Take for example something like the 13-inch MacBook Pro, which I recently reviewed on the channel. One of my biggest negatives for that laptop was in the area of battery life. The four-port model on my end with mixed usage only got around five to six hours of max battery life. Well, if Apple is transitioning over to their own chips, it's not hard to imagine a Mac that could easily get 50% to 100% battery gains. So instead of looking at a laptop that struggles to get six hours of battery life, we could potentially get one that gets 12 hours of battery life. Or if Apple decides to focus more on battery life rather than raw performance, it's not unthinkable to think that we could see MacBooks with over 20 hours of battery life. The second area where you'll probably see much better improvements has to do with thermal performance. It's no secret that Apple's laptop lineup, especially for around the past four years now, has had some issues with thermal performance. This latest generation of the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro are pretty thin, relatively speaking, when you compare them to something like high-end gaming laptops. And I hate to pick on the 13-inch MacBook Pro again, but it was one of the more recent Apple laptops that I reviewed, and during my review, I noticed how hot it got on the bottom of the device. I also bring up the recent MacBook Air, which as a lot of people know, has a fan in a pretty poorly located area, and it's not able to dissipate heat when you're doing intensive tasks. Now, to be fair to Apple, I do like what they did with the 16-inch MacBook Pro redesign, and I think the thermals inside of that big 16-inch laptop are much better handled than what they are currently offering with the smaller end in their lineup. However, they all stand to gain some improvements, and it's not only about these laptops heating up. Consider something like the iPad Pro with how performant that device is, then consider that it literally has no fan inside of it. So Apple could make some interesting decisions here. Another complaint with Apple laptops is that when you are using them, you can hear those fans whirl up quite a bit and they get pretty noisy. Or we could see Apple take the other approach. We could see Apple incorporate fans into those portable laptop designs. And because those chips are using much less power and not heating up as much, Apple could then crank the thermal performance of those chips even higher to eke out more performance. 
Speaking of performance, it's not unreasonable to also think about the advantages this would bring to Apple's lowest end lineup. The prime candidate for an Apple Silicon design chip that could stomp out Intel's processors is the entry-level MacBook Air and the 13-inch MacBook Pro. First of all, the entry-level i3 MacBook Air and even the i5 and i7 versions are much slower at performative tasks. Even the 13-inch i5 MacBook Pro with its 10th generation Intel processor couldn't beat out the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro beat the 13-inch MacBook Pro, exporting the 4K 10-minute video in 4 minutes and 27 seconds, while it took the MacBook Pro 5 minutes and 23 seconds. Looking at these pretty simple tasks, it's easy to think that slapping an A12Z into the latest MacBook Air and MacBook Pro would not only bring better battery life and thermal improvements, but performance as well. But in reality, it actually isn't that simple. That's because even though developers weren't supposed to post any pictures or do any performance benchmarks on the developer Mac mini, well, it's the internet and bottling that up is kind of difficult. Now these leaked Geekbench 5 benchmarks show that the Mac mini with the A12Z chip got a single core score of 833 and a multi-core score of 2,582. Now these are just benchmarks, but for reference, a Core i5 MacBook Air had a higher score. Now that's not indicative of the A12Z chip because the iPad Pro got a single core score of 1121 and a multi-core score of 4672. So we can see that even with Apple using the same A12Z chip as the iPad Pro and even packed with 16 gigabytes of RAM versus the iPad Pro's six gigabytes of RAM, the scores in the multi-core performance are almost 2000 less than that of the iPad Pro. So why is there such a performance difference? The performance difference is mainly due to the fact that apps running on the A12Z and the Mac mini are running through Apple's Rosetta 2 emulation. This emulation is basically making Apple's CPU work double time. The easiest way to think about how this emulation works would be to use a real world example. Say you were having a conversation with someone who spoke a different language than you and you had a translator. Well, naturally, because you have a translator, you could still have a conversation with the other person, but you would have to speak and then the translator would have to translate whatever you were speaking into the other language. And then the other person would have to speak into the other language and then translate that back to you. So you can see that even though you could carry on a full conversation with someone using a translator, the process would take longer as the person in the middle, the translator, has to translate both languages. That would be similar to what Apple is doing with Rosetta 2, translating the Intel x86 applications over to their own custom ARM processor processes, processes, processes. I think you get it. Now, to be fair to Apple, you probably shouldn't see those performance downgrades if you have a native application that takes advantage of Apple's custom silicon. And Apple says that they have all of their own applications already running on their own custom processors. Now for the user, the main risk here is if third-party developers decide to take a while to update their applications, or even worse, decide not to update their applications at all. So theoretically, if third-party developers are slow to upgrade their apps to work natively on these custom chips, you could have really slow performance that doesn't even outperform Intel's chips. We know companies like Adobe are promising and working alongside Apple to update important programs like the Creative Cloud suite of apps, but look at how long it took them to get Photoshop working on the iPad even after they announced it. And look at a lot of the issues they faced there. So if you have a third-party application that you're currently using on your Mac and that you really like, it might take a while for the developers to actually update it. Also on Apple's ARM-based Macs, you'll also run into other problems. For example, Boot Camp will no longer be able to work. Currently, I use Windows Boot Camp not to run programs, but to gain access to the large number of games available on the Windows platform. Even if Apple's own ARM chips bring a ton of benefits, the idea of playing modern PC titles on a Mac will basically be impossible unless developers code versions for ARM-based Macs, which is very unlikely to happen as a large number of games don't even run natively on Macs using Intel processors. Now, going back to the positives, we also have to be a little bit more fair to Apple and not necessarily comparing the A12Z chip in this Mac mini to what they will eventually ship. Don't forget, the A12Z is basically an A12X with an extra GPU core enabled, meaning that it's theoretically two chip generations behind what Apple is about to put out with the A14 chip coming in the fall. 
Furthermore, like I said in my previous video, Craig Federighi in a recent interview with John Gruber of Daring Fireball said basically, look at what we can do without even trying. Not only that, but Apple has said that they would be developing a line of custom chips for the Mac. It sounds like Apple will have custom chips for each of these products and that their performance might vary depending on how Apple decides to design these products. And answering unknown questions is always the hardest thing for me to do, and it's something that I try to avoid on this channel, but you had the comments of asking, should you wait to purchase a Mac or should you go ahead and purchase one of the Intel based Macs right now? And in this video, I tried to give you as much information as possible for the potential benefits and also the potential disadvantages of moving over to Apple's own custom chipset. But I will give you advice, and my ultimate advice is pretty simple. If you don't need a new computer or if you're suffering with some minor pain points right now with your current setup, I would recommend waiting to see what Apple announces and releases at the end of the year and the beginning of next year. You might end up getting a way better computer, especially in areas like thermals and battery life. And even if these new R Macs go horribly wrong, you'll be able to pick up a 2019 Intel model at much lower prices. On the other hand, if your computer dies tomorrow or there's certain tasks your current system is struggling to do, even waiting just three months for a theoretically better product can be worse than just buying what's on the market right now. So for those people who are still about to buy a current Intel Mac, I think that makes sense. And given Apple's track record on keeping software up to date, I'm sure Intel Macs will still receive timely updates for the next few years. But anyway, that's what I think. I know this video didn't give an ultimate answer on whether you should upgrade or wait, but hopefully the information I provided in this video was helpful. If it was helpful, make sure you leave me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed. Also let me know in the comments section below, would you recommend waiting for Apple's new ARM-based Macs or or would you just go buy a current Intel-based Mac right now? If you want to support the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. I'll leave Intel Macs there if you want to buy them through an affiliate link. And also, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.